Hello, everybody. Uh, John Boone, Chief Executive. Um, it's great to have the opportunity to have a brief summary conversation on some reflections we had um, recently with um, some young people um, in the Trust. Um, I've got Paul Devlin, our Chair, and Dr Sue Elcock, who is um, Executive Director of Forensic Services, but she also holds the lead brief for um, uh, um, age, which um, sounds like an odd thing to call it, but um, it's really important that we recognise um, the different needs of the different populations that use all the services across the organisation. The meeting we had uh, was a couple of weeks ago now. We've had some time to reflect on it. Um, one of the things for me that immediately struck me, I don't know about um, you two, was um, having been in the organisation now for just over a couple of years. It was the first opportunity I'd really had to um, hear from, listen to, and have a conversation with young people directly, um, and how important and powerful that can be. And one of the things that um, we were asked to think about pledges at the end, and um, for me, is to make sure that, um, from my perspective, um, in in the executive in the executive team, that we can um, make sure that's not a, just a one-off and start to explore how we can get. Um, much more direct um, input from um, this particular group of people. Because it, 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 it's important for so many reasons, isn't it? That um, for young people, we know nationally and locally, there's there's a huge um, challenge in managing all sorts of, of if issues at the moment, particularly with relation to the pandemic, and um, but more broadly too. Um, so it, it was a, it was a bit of a sort of uh, one of those sort of light bulb moments for me that oh gosh, yes, this is something we really need to think about and think about how we can um, make it easier for, for that dialogue to continue. I don't know what you were, um, your thoughts were on it, Paul. Yeah, and, and I think for me, it reminded me of um, uh, uh, gosh, probably 20 years back, I used to work for Action for Children. And part of the area of responsibility that came under me was uh, about participation. And one of the lessons I learned then was um, if you're going to sit down and have a conversation with and listen to children and young people, do it for real or don't bother. Because there's something about us, uh, you know, it's not about lip service. And I went into that session uh, really, really clear that you know, I knew that those young people, the 13 young people who had clearly spent time preparing for that session, um, coming into a conversation and also doing this through through teams as well with um, some people with um, very powerful job titles. Uh, and it's really it was really important for me to be really clear that I was going into that space um, with a genuine desire to hear from those young people and to listen to what they had to say. Um, and I, uh, I mean, I mean, for me, it was a it was a it was a lovely session. Um, they were really well prepared um, as I remembered from my days back at uh, Action for Children one of the really good things um, is that they were able to speak directly and that's really really refreshing because it enabled us to get to the heart of some things and I know you know there are, there are a couple of young people um, shared some experiences uh, which hadn't been what either they or us would have wanted for them and it was great just to be able to honestly apologize for the experience that they had had but then to talk with them about how we got learning from that um, so I, I do think it's a really important um, space in there. Uh, Sue what, what, what was your take on it? So I must say it's it's an odd one for me because you wouldn't think the director of forensic services that looks after you know people of offenders and so on would be the obvious choice for um, the exact lead for age and actually um, I have to say, it was amazing to hear some of the stories and the courage that was there. Um, but for me personally, I think whilst I'm the forensic director, I'm also a clinician at heart and I've worked across a number of trusts where we've done a lot of really positive work around changing how young people's services are delivered. Um, and I think, you know, that's something that was really evident with what 
um, you know, the, the young people were telling us needs to happen. So, you know, I still think in this day and age, one of the big reflections was it's appalling that we're still not getting our transitions right consistently. So I'm sure at some places, yeah. and for some young people, it is working, but it's not embedded and consistent was, was the clear message. And we know that. So I think there's that sort of authenticity, isn't it, that we've got to have to go away and make sure we put that right. Now, if that's about a you know a transition service that's slightly different to the just ending at 18, and then services arguing about, well, you know, you're not within six months of discharge and transfer, blah, you know, all that sort of stuff. So... So I think transitions for me really came across quite strongly because we know this. It's not something that um, I think we should still not be getting right. I wasn't sure what to expect. I must say when I was invited, it's one of those, I go to loads of boring meetings. There's loads of them in my diary. Um, and I was generally, when people talk about conversation and listening, I was very curious what it was going to be like. Um, and actually quite anxious because I felt very unprepared. I don't often go into meetings where I don't know what it's going to be about. Um, but to hear um, how you could hear how much preparation and thought had gone into what the messages were that they wanted to share with us, you know, and actually, you know, I don't have children, you know, it's a bit of a standing joke sometimes in the trust, you know, I relate more to older people because of the nature of my job, but actually hearing some of their stories, um, I think we do have to question ourselves about how we make sure, um, you know, what we did is what, you know, how we do it is, is what the young people want as well, sort of moving yeah. forwards as well. Um, but if it was about getting the people who've got, as John said, the, um, was it, what was it you said? The impressive job titles or something, I can't remember you used a phrase, then, you know, it's good that we were there um, and that we were able to, so I did two pledges. So I did the, um, and this will make people who know me laugh. Um, so I said, I will listen more because if you noticed, I spent most of that meeting listening and I think that was important and getting involved in more opportunities. So actually recognising that. And then I did the one about, because they challenged us personally. And I think it's good to, be able to give a bit of your personal self. Is I'm struggling with being able to relax in COVID because with not travelling, my holiday time just isn't relaxing me. So I've pledged to try to, to do that. Um, so, yeah, so that was that, those were my reflections, really. Yeah. I think there's, there was a, a really interesting piece that um, also reminded me of why it's important that we hear those younger voices. And that was the piece about communication. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm of an age now where you know I I think uh, I think I'm doing really really well that I can use Twitter, um, <laughs> and you know as those those young people were really off a, a number of different um, uh, social media uh, tools uh, yeah Instagram um, uh, Pinterest uh, what what else was there the, the TikTok was the other one wasn't it and yeah you know, these are these are tools that you know, I know I haven't got a clue about. But as, a, as an organisation, we need to be able to be saying, are we making use of as many different tools as we possibly can? And, you know, I know sometimes there are challenges organisationally um, about some of the technical security issues that mean that they're not all available to us. But actually being getting that really strong challenge from those young people about actually, you know, you need you need to be better at communicating with us through the mediums that we actually use. I thought that was a really powerful piece. And and the pledges was a um, it was good to get those those challenges. And I know um, what I, I I certainly in relation to the young people's voices, uh, one of my pledges was that um, I was wanting to make sure that I work uh, to support Sue, you with with your piece as the exec sponsor, but also um, and make sure that I'm having that conversation with you about. So, what are you? What are you hearing here? What are you enabling um, for those those younger voices? And and it was really it was really generous, I think, of the young people to ask us about our well being. Um, and that was the that other pledge was about our well-being and what are we doing for that uh, and I did pledge uh, and again if you follow me on Twitter you'll know that I've been uh, actually doing some running um, and uh, I, I pledge to continue doing my running three days a week um, but it was nice to be able to do that in that context um, so yeah that that was that was an interesting piece for me my only um 
disappointment on the whole event was the fact that I only came 19th in the quiz. Yeah, I thought um, that was a, it was a poor performance, John. It was a poor performance. Uh, even I came one above you. <laughs> Do you know what, though? John guessed who I was in the quiz. So for those of you who don't know, I really enjoy personal training sessions with an ex-boxer, and he's now restarted them through... Um, zoom so i'm able to do my sessions at home so i named myself boxer so i was teasing john behind the scenes about his scores and he came straight back going boxer <laughs> so this is so uh, I know, the executive well we, I, I know this is this is going to be being shared uh with the young people um, who engaged with us so i just wanted to say again to um you young people thank you so much for the time you gave us and the time you put into thinking about what you wanted to bring to us um my uh, yeah i my hope would be that on the back of this as john said that this isn't a one-off and that there are other engagements and that's yeah it'd be great if we can have another conversation at some point but i think as sue was saying actually we need to make sure that we can plug you in with different people um, in the organization who actually need to hear from you and to listen to you uh, and to have conversations with you so i did just want to uh, put a thank you out again to to all of you I think that's really good because for us it's about unblocking if there are problems because it's a big organization and not everybody works in the same way and sometimes it's useful if we're plugging you know and there's barriers for us to be able to say no no this is how we're doing business now you know and so there was so amazing i think people shared really honestly i'm not sure i'd have been able to share as honestly at that age even now actually so um i was i was really humbled actually that people were willing to share that with us if i'm honest um, and I'm not particularly touchy feely, and it really did hit home. I have to say, so thank you. I'd, I'd say the same. Thank you very much. And then um, I'll wrap it up by uh, come back to the beginning and finishing with me and and echo both those sentiments. Thought it was a really powerful piece, um, and to thank everybody that was involved. Um, we will find it really helpful, and, and our task is to make sure that um, that we can, as Sue says, start to move things forward. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.